now we are going to learn the learner's characteristics the personal characteristics personal characteristics would define um the personal characteristics will be basically the so the the background of the student all right uh, the background of the student uh, and then the demographic information like the age the gender the maturity the language or the dialect uh, the socio economic status uh, the income status um, the standard of living you know lifestyle also comes into play so these are the personal things that the learner is going to come with okay now uh, in the mcq questions uh, in your paper 1 teaching aptitude you are going to find out some questions which will you know uh, if you learn these things there will be a very reflective level that you are going to um uh, the, that you are going to experience while solving those questions which will basically about um how the students are going to react to a certain information that is being imparted what will be the impact of the educator on such a student who has a certain background so these are the types of um mcqs or these are the type of questions that may appear and you will have to require to be reflect active in nature the reflective level of learning has to be enhanced so that you can grasp these theoretical um, you know concepts understand their meanings and then solve try to solve the questions i definitely i'm definite that if there is reflective level of thinking and learning then definitely you're going to score at par in teaching aptitude okay now moving on the second is the academic the academic characteristics define the you know the goals uh, this is the aspiration level you know the aspiration level of the learner how far in qualification that uh, student wants to be uh, you know wants to go so every student's aspiration level would be different according to maybe different factors uh, at home or uh, professionally personally um, so the aspiration level can be different uh, some uh, a student might come from a family with a business background and the aspiration level would be of the student to you know do a great business take over fathers or you know uh, uncles business and do it uh, uh, and uh, uh, actually um, make it a beautiful business making it make, make it an expand it in a beautiful manner so that can be also an aspiration level and the other one there there can be a student who wants to you know score really good marks in net uh, and become a professor or uh, uh, really wants to score good marks in cat and you know crack Uh, mba and uh, get into some of the good iams so aspiration level can also differ the this is also one of the major characteristic of a learner then social social uh, becomes the behavioral you know the behavior among group members so this is all about the behavioral skills uh, this is about the inter interpersonal skills that the student has what kind of group is the student in what type of ideology and thinking the group follows uh, what is the lifestyle of that group what is the uh, what are the peer pressures that are prevailing in that group is something that will tell about much about the uh, you know social skills of the learner and the characteristics of the learner and finally cognitive brain um you know cognition or the psychomotor skills of the learner how learner perceives remembers solves organizes and represents these are the intellectual skills these are the skills that over a period of time can be nurtured can be learned can be taught uh, can be enhanced if there is great bond between the teacher the educator and the learner if there is good professional bond and good learning and teaching bond between the both teacher and the learner cognitive skills can be definitely enhanced through different activities to, through different quizzes through you know competitions these skills can be enhanced so these are the learners characteristics okay 
and then what are the characteristics of a good learner so a good learner how how are you going to find out who is a good learner or who has a better temperament towards learning a good learner is persistent uh, the learner is going to study persistently is going to be adamant that okay i have to learn i have to learn this concept by hook or crook so the student is going to be sticky in and picky in learning the concepts practical the student is going to be very practical and is going to have a total uh, practical aptitude into seeking what is the future what is the student's future how the learner perceives their own future um uh, what what do they want to become and that will motivate the learner to learn more share their knowledge these types of students are good teachers good educators because they will share their knowledge they might share their notes they might share their knowledge they they, they might be found in the corners uh, of the classroom teaching a couple of students on their own uh, a certain skill or certain topics so they will share their knowledge they will be always positive towards different life problems life issues because they want to learn more they they are very inquisitive in nature curious to learn new things again inquisitive inquiring they want to question each and everything so that they can learn they are not going to be uh, you know um, they are not going to be derogatory they are not going to uh, be condescending they are not going to be insulting they are going to be curious about different things to uh, they are going to be curious of how to learn new things they are going to find time to read analyze and evaluate the taught information so they are going to actually have the timetable so something that we very initially learned about the teaching uh, uh, you know principles and objectives about discipline these are the ones which have the discipline these are the ones who can tackle different issues at different time zones and they can learn uh, you know strive to learn then they enjoy learning and that is why they are persistent they are adamant to learn they are they are you know open to learning newer things they are very inquisitive and they they are continuously upgrading themselves they are not you know uh, they are not um, you know um, stagnant in learning that okay fine i have learned it once i am not going to upgrade my knowledge or i have learned a lot now i'm not going to learn this is not the at attitude the attitude is reverse the attitude is okay i have learned this much i have to learn more because there's so much to learn there's some you know learning is like pacific ocean you know uh, it's so deep and it's so vast no one can actually um, you know encompass the whole learning so they are always open to new learnings so this these are the characteristics of a good learner and of course then there are characteristics of a good teacher as well the good teacher is qualified and knowledgeable so a teacher or the educator must always have some qualification so that they know the skill to teach they know the different cases they have the experience to share and that's why they have to be qualified and knowledgeable both they are the facilitators so a good teacher does not only impart knowledge the good teacher would also facilitate and counsel the student so that the students can grasp the knowledge in much better way then one uh, who motivates and encourages like i said a teacher has a very big responsibility of motivating the students at every step because at every step there might be boredom there might be demotivation there might be struggle there might be competition uh, you know pressure so there might be so many things and the teacher has to walk through you know holding the hand of the student walk through all those hurdles so that the student is motivated all the time then plans the course according to the retention capacity of the students students should not be burdened by a big pile of you know information it is up to the uh, educator up to the teacher to plan the course accordingly so that the retention capacity is adjusted is balanced by the planning of the course 
knowledge of the teaching models and strategies good a good teacher a good and uh, a good educator has to have the knowledge of different teaching models and strategies so at different times at different possibilities the teacher can impart knowledge for example if there is a subject that has to be taught some uh, uh, there is a subject like disaster management or environmental studies that has to be taught now this subject can uh, you know can be taught through powerpoint presentations through videos and audios but there can be different other methodologies also you can you know a teacher can take the students into a garden into an open space try some uh, you know academic activities try some classroom activities uh, outside the corridor outside the you know uh, uh, inside the campus and outside the room uh, so that the belongingness towards the environment the belongingness towards the subject is enhanced uh, the teaching uh, actually the learner pumps up to learn more things so uh, this type of behavior this type of teaching model can obviously be used by a by an efficient teacher positive attitude and good sense of humor is again a must a uh, a very uh, interesting character characteristic a boring teacher is uh, you know will not be liked by many and it will also you know the, the teacher is not going to be impact worthy so to be impact worthy there has to be some kind of positivism some kind of uh, you know knowledge some kind of quotations that you must you know uh, learn so that you can you know uh, give them in the in the classroom so these are the these are some of the characteristics of a good teacher of an efficient teacher the teacher is a role model a good teacher or an efficient educator is a role model uh, the students would look up to uh, their educator and that is why um, a teacher has to be ethically morally uh, profound also very importantly non authoritarian the teacher should not be you know a monarch or always uh, you know uh, the teacher has should be democratic in nature involving including maximum of the students so the students also believe that they can take the decisions they can be leaders of tomorrow finally the, the the teacher should not be prejudiced not be biased and always open to improvement sometimes uh, in the feedback if the students write that okay the teacher would uh, you know uh, does not uh, teach this subject properly the teacher should not backbite and the teacher should not you know uh, um, uh, follow this pattern that uh, the uh, i'll cut the marks of the students oh that student would uh, was telling something bad about me i'll see i'll see that student teacher and educator is far more or far upgraded than the student and that has to be learned and that has to be understood by a teacher and educator and that is why there is no scope of any prejudice any scope of bias and there's a lot and lot scope of improvement for each and every one for a good teacher and for a good learner so this was the last slide of this powerpoint presentation uh, we are going to meet soon with a new Uh, PPT uh, of part two of the teaching aptitude. So teaching aptitude has been divided into three parts. This was part one. I hope that this was understood by you. Uh, I would again um, make it a repetition that uh, do not memorize these concepts. This these concepts have to be taken to the reflective level because that is how you are going to attempt and uh, effect effectively uh, effectively you are going to solve the questions of the teaching aptitude. 